Hey everybody, I'm Stacy with New Creations by Stacy. I'm just gonna give it a minute uh, for some people to jump on. I'm gonna go ahead and log in over here so that I can see any comments too. So give me just a sec. Sometimes it takes a minute to come up. I do see some people jumping on, so here we go. All right. <clears throat> so again, I'm Stacy with New Creations by Stacy. As you're coming on tonight, just say hey where you're watching from. Um, I'm a Dixie Bell retailer here in Madison, Alabama at Blue Vintage Market. And <clears throat> tonight, um, I'm just coming on so that we can <clears throat> do some detail work on this piece that we started last Sunday night on the page. Uh, so I'll talk about that in just a second. I do have a product list um, in the description so you can see all the colors that and the products that we'll be using tonight. Also, Dixie Bell is on as well to help answer any questions if you guys have them. And I will try to watch the comments too as they come up. If I miss any questions, I'll go back at the end and respond. The only thing is I've been having some technical issues last week. Once I responded to a few comments, it kind of cut me off. So if you don't hear from me and you do have a question, just send me a message on my page. Um, and I did go ahead and I have a link to my Facebook page as well um, in the description. So, oh, hey, Janice from Tulsa. Oh, hey, Stacy. I see some people on here. Oh, from Branson, Missouri. I'm from St. Louis. Um, so, and I see Dixie Bell on too. So, <clears throat> well, I'll go ahead and get started and I'll try to watch these comments. So, last week again, if you didn't see, let me just kind of quickly let you know where we're going with this. So this is a custom piece, and um, I've done a couple other pieces for this client as well that are in the same room also. Uh, and they're pretty, one of them is a pretty bold statement piece. Um, and she's a quilter, so we use this material, and she created, or um, someone else actually did some quilting squares, sewed them together, and on the sides we attach that. And it's using this material. So with this piece here, and then I also have some, I did some wall items for her. And those are in Vintage Duck Egg and Stormy Seas. <clears throat> and the color of the desk is actually the gulf. So I need to tie all that into one. So that's why we've got the blend here with Stormy Seas, the gulf. And I've got some highlights and fluff as well. Um, so that's what we did last week. This week, we're actually going to hand paint some quilting squares onto the drawers here. And I've got one set up and I also did a sample board and we're not gonna follow the sample board exactly, but just so you know where we're going with this, I'm gonna do some quilting squares like this. This one in the center, um, we're gonna use the same colors. That's a blend of Golden Gem Mousse and Honky Tonk Red. So we're gonna do that, but I'm actually gonna use the damask stencil because also last week we did some would you bend down here. And there's some nice flourishes that I think would go with the damask a little bit better. Plus the hardware for this piece just looks better. Um, so we're gonna switch that up a little bit. We're gonna hand paint some flowers. I didn't do all the flowers all the way around, but so you kind of get an idea of what they look like. And then we're gonna do some stripes too. And that's what we're gonna start with tonight. So let me go ahead and bring you guys in so that you have a really good view. Oh, hey, Lamar. How are you doing? Oh, thank you, Susan. I always get so nervous coming on here. So, <laughs> hey, Michelle. Oh, you're in Madison too. Awesome. All right. So let me go ahead and bring you up close and drop you down so you can kind of see my workspace and see what I'm just doing with the paint, too. So, I'm not really able to see out everything here once the screen is dropped down. So, if you guys are having a problem seeing anything at all, um, just let me know. Let's see here. I want to get that. I'm going to bring it back just a little bit because I want to get my work area in here too, so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Well, when I kind of laid this out earlier, it worked out a little bit better. You could see a little more of my workspace, but hopefully you guys can see that pretty well. Just let me know if you can. I'm going to try to keep my hands out of the way because we are, like I said, doing a lot of detail work. 
So give me just a sec. With the stripes, we're actually going to do the stripes in Stormy Seas. And this is kind of a blue-gray color. It's one of my favorites, actually. So you can kind of see what that looks like. <clears throat> and for the stripes, we're just going to start by putting the tape on. You do want a clean release tape. Um, bear with me for just a sec. I'm just looking at... Let's see. Someone please respond. Uh, someone is asking about a crib. They just want to know if the besting wax is okay to use as the finishing top coat um, for a baby crib. Yes, you can use besting wax. Um, <clears throat> the, only, the only thing with waxes <clears throat> as a protectant, well, first of all, the Dixie Bell paint um, cures within 30 days and it doesn't require a protectant. The besting wax will give you a beautiful sheen um, to protect the paint. Wax though typically wears off in about six months to a year, so you, you do have to redo it um, if you want that, that sheen to, to kind of last on there. Um, so I usually, I, I do like to use besting wax, um, especially to add detail work and everything in or antique it out. I do personally like to top coat after I use besting wax. So if you guys, I wanted to answer that question. Oh, and it looks like Dixie Bell answered it as well. Um, <clears throat> so what I'm doing here is I'm just laying out my tape. So I went ahead and laid out the tape, the, the first section to tape off my sections here. So I have my center quilt block. And then what I'm doing is just using some guiding tape so that I have straight lines. Um, and this is just easier than, you know, measuring it out and drawing. I don't want to burnish my tape down too much because my paint hasn't even been on here for a full day. And so sometimes that you can have an issue with the paint pulling up. So I'm going to use a slightly different technique and I'm not going to burnish my, my tape down. I'm just going to lightly adhere it. Uh, but I do want to kind of get it a little bit into the cracks and crevices. Because I'm doing this so quickly, if it does pull a little paint off, that's okay. I'll just go back through and touch up that section. <clears throat> um, yeah, I see that Lamar says a top coat as well. I mean, I, I would definitely agree with that. I would use the busting wax if you want to antique it or you want to like add some detail into grooves or anything like that, but I would, especially with a baby, um, using it as a crib, I would definitely, I would probably definitely do three coats of a top coat. Uh, just because I know I have a three month old granddaughter right now and she's teething and she is, oh, I just put that in the wrong section talking. But she's teething and she's drooling all over the place. So I would definitely, I would definitely think you may want to use like a clear coat. And you can do those in a, it, they come in a gloss sheen, a satin, and um, a flat. So satin to me is the closest to, um, probably the closest to the finish or sheen that you would get from a wax. And you know, everybody likes different things, so that's just, that's simply my opinion. So I'm sure that you'll, you know, you may get some other opinions as well. <clears throat> so I'm just continuing to put my tape on here. I'm just using my little guide markers. Um, so I did use a watercolor pencil and I drew the flowers on. Um, so I kind of know this will be my last tape that I have to put on over here. This other side is just all going to be flowers. Oh, thank you, April. All right. So I'm kind of trying to watch the comments um, as I do this here. Actually, I lied. I am going to have another piece of tape, I think. Let's see. 
It just depends on where this comes out here. So, and again, I'm not trying to burnish too much because I am worried about this tape on my paint. So I'm trying to be very, very gentle. No, I won't have another, another piece that I need to lay out. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pull that back. I'm just gonna double check my edges here to make sure they're at least stuck down. Um, and then we'll go ahead and quickly get this side and we can get to painting here. And I'm gonna pull this over just a little bit so that I can get in here and work a little bit better. Hopefully you can still see me. Transfer on top of no pain gel stain. Um, I'm actually, I'm so sorry. I'm not really, I'm gonna let Dixie Bell answer that. Um, you're welcome to message me on my page about, about that, the question about the no pain gel stain. Um, but there's been some changes with Dixie Bell and I'm not really sure how much I can say about that. So I'm going to let Dixie Bell answer. I'm sorry, <laughs> but you're welcome to message me that question on my page, Susan, and I'm happy to answer it for you there. Let's see here. So I just got a few more pieces of tape to go on here. I always feel like I'm, I, mean, I go really slowly whenever I'm on these lives. <laughs> so let's see, not much more. <clears throat> so I'll go ahead and actually, well, I can wait a little bit here. Just a couple more pieces of tape to put on. So normally, just to kind of talk about, like I said, with my paint, I'm doing this a little bit differently. So you might see a slightly different technique than you normally see with the stripes. Um, but usually if your paint has been on for a while, um, you know, it cures and hardens more and more every day. So usually if your paint's been on for a while, you really want to burnish. You wanna kind of burnish the edges of your tape so that you don't get that seepage underneath. But like I said, because my paint hasn't been on so long, I'm gonna do this a little bit differently. Um, so I'm just really having a hard time going in a straight line here. Let's see, there we go, perfect. So just lightly peel those up. So normally I would take like um, a little tool or you could use like a debit card or something like that and just get down in those edges, make sure the paint was stuck well so it didn't bleed under. But like I said, I'm not doing that today. So when you do that and you burnish those edges, you can actually just take your paint and just paint it on as you normally would. In this case, I'm gonna use my tape more like a stencil um, because again, I don't want to have the bleed through underneath. I don't need super, super crisp lines because this is, these are supposed to be quilt blocks and I want them to look, uh, kind of aged a little bit and, and they don't necessarily, these stripes don't have to be perfectly opaque. So what I'm doing is I'm just using a dry art bristle brush. I'm just dabbing a little bit of paint on it. You can see I'm wiping it. Oh, well, let me actually, let me move this over so you can see. I'm wiping it on a paper towel and then I'm just going back through and I'm dabbing on my stripes. So this is more like you would do a stencil. Normally you could just paint stripes on and all would be good. Uh, and I didn't want to tape off the top parts around the edge. So I, and I'm actually gonna go over that edge with gold. So I'm not too worried about those edges being perfect. I'm gonna go back though and push some paint into there in a little bit. We're just gonna get these stripes on here. Like I said, I'm not so worried if I get a little bit on that edge around there, anything like that. I'm just continuously, each time I put paint on, I'm dabbing a little bit off on the paper towel. I don't want too much paint because then it will seep 
in under the tape. And because you get so much excess um, on whatever you're wiping it off on, whether it be a paper towel or just an old rag, you can usually go back in there and just get a little, pick up a little bit more paint on my brush and keep going. So, we're almost done with this side. Once it is totally cured, you should be fine. You can always try in the back of a piece in a hidden area to try first. If that's the question, I think it's, um, well, actually, I'm just, I don't, yeah. You may want to try Voodoo Gel Stain. Um, and depending, what color are you trying to go with the No Pain Gel Stain? Okay, so down here, I've got my flowers drawn out, so I'm not doing the stripes too, too far down. Like I said, I don't necessarily need these stripes to be perfect, um, but we're gonna have the flowers, the flowers are gonna start over in this section. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take a flat brush here. It's just another art brush. I'm gonna take a flat brush so that I can get along the edges. I'm gonna wash some, wipe some of the paint off, but when you're doing edges so you don't have to tape it off, if you wipe the paint off your brush a little bit and then just run, rest your hand on, on here, because you don't, it's not like, you know, how I was just doing the dabbing. Um, you don't really want your hand in the air when you're trying to paint a straight line. Very little paint, just right on the tip. Lay your brush down and just roll it across for that straight line. And I'm trying to be a little extra careful because I didn't burnish down um, that the corners with my tape either. All right, so I'll flip the drawer around later to do these bottom ones. And I'm just kind of dabbing so that where I actually painted it like that, I'm gonna add a little, I've got a little Dixie cup of water over here I'm gonna wet this down a little bit but just because of the way my brush was, but then I'm gonna wipe it off to get the water out of it because you don't want a lot of water in your paint when you're doing something like this or it definitely will run under run under the tape or your stencil, what, whichever one you're doing with it. Just lay your brush down, run it across. Keep your hand resting on something and only pull the brush with your fingers and that's going to be what makes you steady when you're trying to paint um, in detail. Uh, so there we go. That part's done. So let me just scoot you over a little bit. We're quickly going to try to go ahead and do this. Um, let me check the time because I want to get through all the steps with you guys. I just don't, I, I don't, I want to make sure I'm not spending too much time on just one thing because this detail work is kind of, it is kind of time consuming. It's definitely not a quick, um, this is the longest part of painting a piece is that is the detail work to me on the end, but it's the detail work that really makes it, you know, unique and different. So, oh. okay. So one other thing that I forgot to mention earlier is I also, before I do my detail work, I do protect my piece with um, a clear coat of satin. You don't have to do that. Um, definitely not a requirement, but that keeps my paint separate. It keeps my detail work separate. So whatever detail work I'm doing on here, as long as it's water-based, if if I don't like it, even after it dries a little bit, I can, and you've probably seen me do it before, if you've seen any of my lives, um, I may not like what I'm doing, I can just completely wipe it back. Um, so that's why I like to protect my piece before I start into any detail work. Um, if I was doing something oil-based on top of here, which you can do, uh, if I was doing something like that, then I would, um, I could, I could still wipe it back, but it would be with mineral spirits. But this paint is so porous that if you don't protect it first, 
um, it sinks right into the paint, whatever you're, you know, whatever medium you're using on top of it. So you're not going to be able to correct any error, or any mistakes. And I don't know about everybody else, but I make a lot of mistakes. Or I think something's going to look really good and it just doesn't. <laughs> so that's another reason. Um, I always have really big ideas, but they don't always look like they do in my head. So I don't know if anybody else has that problem. So a little tiny bit of paint. We're going to work that edge again. And just do you rest your hand and run your brush right over. I'm doing the dabbing so it kind of mixes in with the same kind of finish as the rest of the the rest of the stripes. Um, and like I said, I will, once I finish this, I don't want it to be perfect. When I think of a quilt and quilts, I think of something that's well used and loved and a little bit warm, but just gives you comfort. So to me, and, and also based on the other piece I've done for her, it's distressed. I feel like this doesn't look, I don't want this to look, you know, brand new and I want it to look more worn um, and loved. I don't want it to be perfect. So I will use some sandpaper, probably a 220 grid. Um, once I'm done with everything and just run that over to roughen, to roughen it up some, um, I won't expose the wood, but I just want, um, this part to kind of look loved. So a little bit of paint there. I'm almost done with these stripes part. We'll take off the tape and then we'll work on the stencil. Ah, uh, and then we'll come back and do the hand painted flowers here. And I still have more detail work outside of this. So if I do have an issue, um, I can generally cover it up with uh, more detail work. So I'm almost done with this last. Oh, actually, I don't even have to do that other side. So I've just got a couple over here to do. Just get that excess paint off and then go across and then dab it in. You can also push your paint into a line, like if you're trying to get a straight line, but uh, you maybe are using a different type of brush or something like that. You can also just kind of push your paint lightly in. And actually, I'll do it just on this last stripe. If you want to paint a straight line, but you can't quite get it, you can push your paint into the line. And you can do that all the way over. I think the going straight across is the easier method, but this has nothing to do with this. But if you're painting like along a popcorn ceiling, that pushing the paint in really, really works. Um, all right, perfect. So that's all I wanna do. Like I said, I'm not trying to make this perfect. We're gonna go ahead and just start taking off the tape here. I'm gonna go very slowly because I think I've mentioned it a lot, but you can tell I'm probably kind of worried about that paint peeling off since it hasn't, that second coat hasn't been on here even all day. Um, so just very slowly, if you're in a situation like this, uh, just very slowly pull it off. And I like that spotted look too. It kind of gives it like a denim effect. Um, let's see, this one's stuck on a little bit more. Slowly gonna work it off. Also, even if your paint has been on here for a while and you put the protectant on that day, it reactivates. So you still wanna be extra careful unless everything has been sitting for some time. So I almost got this off. Let me just check the comments. Oh, no, it's so true. Michelle said getting it from your head to the, the project can be a challenge. And, it, you know, as I go to, I get all these other ideas, and I just, I can complicate anything. It's, sometimes I need somebody to just say stop. <laughs> so if you guys get to that, if you see me getting to that point, just tell me to stop. <laughs> Oh, thanks, Dixie Bell. 
Hey, Barbara from South Dakota. All right, so just two more to go here. So by the way, whenever I drew this on, um, if you're wanting to like hand paint something on your chalk paint, um, the best thing to do is use a watercolor pencil because you can draw on here. And then as soon as your paint goes on and activates it, um, it'll disappear. So those lines won't be seen anymore. I'm gonna turn it around this way because we're gonna start working on the stencil and this is the top of my drawer here. Um, so let's see. Oh, thanks. All right, so now we're gonna do a stencil in the middle. And you guys saw the board. I was using the Moroccan stencil, but I really didn't like it. It just, it wasn't gonna work to me with the hardware and for the flourishes at the bottom. So I'm gonna use the Damask stencil. So this is one of the new stencils by Dixie Bell. You can see what I do to my stuff. I just cut it up um, to make it work. I rarely use a whole stencil and I usually don't use it in the design. I'm usually picking little parts out of it. So I just went ahead and cut this part out because the design I'm gonna make in here is gonna come from this. Um, so we are gonna start by, I'm gonna do the damask in the center. So I'm just kind of laying it out, uh, the full damask here in the center. I'm not gonna do this bottom part because it's just too long and I don't, I think it'll look better without it. I'm gonna use that, that piece though in another, um, in another uh, design here in the same square. But, hold on, just sometimes I have a hard time talking and, and trying to get my design layout too at the same time. So what I'm doing is I'm just taping down my stencil so it'll stay in one spot. Um, you can use a spray adhesive too, but I, you know, there's a lot of things that come along with that that I just usually don't like to deal with. I don't like to clean my stencil. I don't like to clean it off my stencil. I also, it can do some different things depending on how it sticks to your paint. So I just kind of prefer to hold it down. Um, and you know with the stencil, again, I'm not, if I was looking for perfect lines, I might want to use the spray adhesive. It'll work a little bit more like tape. Um, yeah, the new stencils are awesome. I love them. But you see what I do. So we're going to do this in Honky Tonk Red. Let me go ahead and put my, I'm terrible with letting my paint dry out. But the good thing with that is. Uh, you just add a little bit of water and it's fine. Um, it's not recommended that you paint out of your canisters like I do, but I do. <laughs> so, all right, so we've got Honky Tonk Red, and then I'm gonna take some of the mousse, the Golden Gem. And the Golden Gem mousse, it's thicker than the other mousses you can see. You can add some water to it to thin it out. Um, depending on the project, you see I've used a lot of it and it goes a long way. I love this stuff. The coverage is amazing. But we're gonna blend this with the Honky Tonk Red on the stencil. So I'm gonna use two different brushes. Oh, see, I don't have the silk screen stencils yet. Um, yeah, I'm actually getting ready to place the order. I'm so behind. Um, so I've got the two, I've got two art brushes, natural bristle brushes, that's what we're gonna use. Um, I'm gonna grab another paper towel here because we're gonna wanna dab this off too, just like what we did with the stripes. And I'm gonna go back and forth between the colors because I want to, um, I wanna blend them and there's no water. Well, I mean, I guess you could use water with the stencil, but it's not really a good idea. Um, just because it's going to bleed a lot and you're not, you're really not going to have a clear um, line. But, so I want to blend them. So I'm going to do them in small sections. Um, I just kind of like the stripes. I just put a little bit of paint on my brush, wiped it off on the paper towel, kind of went a little over. You know, I've got to stop doing that. Uh, let me get a Oh, I don't have my diaper. Oh, yes, I do. 
Diaper wipes are amazing um, for stuff like this. I just got a little bit off the outside of my stencil. I want to wipe it off because I don't really want that there. And then I'm going to, hopefully that's not too dry, I'm going to dip my brush in just a tiny bit of the mousse. Going to dab it off just like with the other. And I'm going to go ahead, I want to kind of maybe stick to the outside of the stencil a little bit uh, on this damask part. And I'm kind of switching out between the red and the gold. Kind of, it gives it a, a little bit of a different that's the kind of blend I was talking about. So it's not overpowering either color. Whoops, I just dipped the wrong brush in the wrong color, but it's okay. It'll work itself out. So I'm dipping my brush in, wiping it off so it's relatively dry. And then I'm just going back on here and dotting the paint on. I am, ho hopefully you can understand me. I have my brush in my mouth. Um, <laughs> I'm just dabbing it on and I'm holding my stencil down since I'm not using any adhesive or anything like that. I just have it taped down. So we're gonna come back and do a little bit of gold in here. I wanna keep it light because I want that center to be a little more red. So very light dabs. I did not, oh, hey, Julie, thank you. Um. I just did some light dabs because I, I want that gold to be very light in that center area. And the reason I'm putting my damask in this section, I kind of, um, you know, the whole stencil with the small quilt block, I wanted to use the damask, but it was just, it, it didn't lay out right for this particular block. So I'm doing it I'm actually doing it this way. I put the hardware on here to kind of see exactly where the scrolls would come through. Um, and that's kind of why I ended up deciding to go this route. And I'll try to, sh it, hopefully if I remember that, by the time we get to the end, I'll show you guys how that's gonna look. So I'm just dabbing away still. Very little paint that you put on here and then just kind of wipe it off. Going around the edges, just try to be careful. Again, this is why I protect. If I did not protect, this would not wipe off like that. And even I may have some that I didn't see. And once I, once I take this off, even though it's a little bit dry, it will still, um, it'll still wipe off because uh, it hasn't had time to really cure and harden yet. Uh, just going around. Mixing that gold in. And you see, where my stencil's not all the way down, but each time I dab, it's bouncing back down where I'm not holding it. And that's, it's okay because I'm not looking for something clear and crisp. I want it to be a little distressed and rough around the edges. Um, you can hold it down like this if you want it to be more crisp. Uh, that bouncing where that plastic is coming up and down, you're not gonna have it too, um, as long as you're not using a lot of paint, let me clarify that. As long as you're not using a lot of paint, you're still gonna have the basic um, shape and everything. You, It won't be too off. All right, so we're just gonna come in just a little bit more with the gold here at the bottom, and then we'll take this part off. I don't know if I'm gonna get as far as I thought I was tonight, but this is, it is time consuming sometimes for the detail work, but well worth it. All right, so I think I'm kind of happy with how that's looking. Let me just make sure I got everything. All right, so let's see how that looks now. Hey, Jerry from Illinois. Oh, and hey, Zan from Tennessee, Zane. All right, so. 
I have no fingernails. Um, so let me see if I can get under this. There we go. And we'll just pop that right off. So see, I've got a line around here because I wasn't so great about staying in the stencil. So I'm just gonna take my diaper wipe and carefully go around and wash that off. Like I said, this would not happen if I hadn't protected it. And sometimes I get a little um, OCD. So I, uh, well, see, I said that and now I can't get this off. I'm trying not to scrub too hard too because it hasn't been on here for too long. There we go, that's good. Okay, so now I'm going to bring in, so this fire part on the, or well, it's not fire, it's the bottom of the damask. It looks like a little fire leafy thing. <laughs> I'm gonna actually run that, I think, hmm, I think I'm gonna run those down from the corners maybe. Or I could do the little uh, Fleur de Lis from the top. I could run that in. Uh, I think I kind of like the Fleur de Lis a little bit better, especially with my pattern on the bottom. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and run the Fleur de Lis over. I just kind of want that pointing into the middle. I might do the other piece on the bottom. Um, so I'm not gonna tape that on, it's pretty small. Um, it does look like amber, doesn't it? When you blend these two together, I kind of almost thought about just pulling out amber and using it. Um, it's a slightly different look because that's what I was actually originally thinking. And I did a live, I think it was on the chalk 101 page. I did a live and, um, I, I think I did the amber. I blended the amber and the gold. It was gorgeous. It's just a little bit more. This takes a little bit with the honky tonk red. It's not quite as metallic. So it's a little more subtle than um, the amber and the the amber and the golden gem together. So there we go on that one. And she was wanting red too on this piece. So. And of course, on the other little things we did too, there was red. I tell you what, let me check the time because we can go ahead and start. Yeah, I only have seven minutes. So I tell you what, let's go ahead and start painting the flowers. You guys kind of get the idea, like, you know, how to use the stencil or the different techniques for that. Um, oh, thank you, Dixie Bell. Let's see, yeah, this reminds me of Christmas so much too. I mean, wouldn't this be gorgeous on some Christmas ornaments with like some gold mousse on there um, and that red, I, I don't know. I just love this new mousse. It's, it's my favorite new thing. Um, all right, so for the flowers, I'll just paint a couple. And I just, the reason I really wanna do this is a lot of people are afraid to just paint by hand. This is really actually so much easier than you would necessarily think. So I'm gonna start off with, so actually let me show you. This is what the material looks like. So this is kind of how I drew my flowers out, like the corners on each side. So this is kind of how I'm gonna paint them. And I'm gonna, in the background you have all of these smaller flowers. I want to paint the background first um, because, you know, my bigger flowers are going to overlap that. And if I paint those last, it's not going to look like the background. It'll just look odd. So you always want to put in your background first. Oh, thank you, Sue. So I, whoa, I'm so glad that didn't go onto my piece. Um, so actually, I'm just gonna use the lids here. It's a little bit easier. And I wanna open up my fluff too because I don't want everything to look really flat. So I'm gonna add some highlights, but it'll be super easy. Um, so I'm just gonna set this down here. You can also see this is the fluff. Um, I kind of stick my brush in there, but you know, the, the ratio on it, it'll still look like fluff. Um, so this is Flamingo. 
And then we also have apricot that I'm going to be using for those background flowers. So on this, like I said, super easy. I am going to want my brush wet um, because I want to be specific. These are small. I want to be specific in what I'm doing here. So let's see. Can you guys see? Um, let me see, maybe I should start over here on some of these small flowers so you can see a little bit better. I'll just fold that over. And this I'm just using for my color. So I put some of the apricot on here and these are really small flowers. All I'm gonna do is make my brush go in little circles. So easy. And they don't have to be perfect. You can see how that one just kind of went all in the wrong direction. Um, and that's okay, you just wanna keep your brush wet for this because you'll have better control over your paint. So let's see, let's do a couple of these. I'm not following the material exactly. Just wanna do, it's fine if you have texture, texture just adds to it. You can add sea spray to it if you wanna actually make texture. Um, let's see. Let's go up here with another small little flower. I'm just kind of drawing some in here. Perfect. I'm gonna rinse this off. And I know those don't look like flowers at all, but they'll come together. So now I'm gonna come in with some Flamingo. I'm using the same brush. If my colors mix, that's okay. It's just gonna make it look more dimensional. Um, just coming in, making the little circles with my brush. And in some of these places, the paint is a little more opaque than others. And that's good too. Because, um, you know, the more it looks like you have different colors in here, the more depth and the less flat it's going to look. So... Did that, just painted a few little flowers in. Now I'm going to take, they have little red dots in them. So actually maybe, no, not enough in there. So while it's still wet, I'm going to um, just put some little red dots in. Some of it might blend a little bit. That's okay. That's why I'm using the same brush too. So once you put the dots in, it's going to look a little bit more colorful. Now I'm going to take and put some little white streaks in. That was too much paint. So I'm gonna twist my brush to wipe it off a little bit. And this is going to make them look a little bit more like flowers. I'm not really trying to go in a specific place. You'll notice on the material, they're kind of outlined in white. I am just randomly picking places to put a little white paint on here. There is no rhyme or reason. It's just a little bit on the outside. Normally I use my spray bottle and not this Dixie cup, but just thought it, this is a little bit of extra paint on here, but it's okay because there's a lot of white in here. So it's perfectly fine. There's even some white in the background and in a lot of the flowers. So we got those little tiny flowers on. Now let's, let's do some leaves because the leaves are the next thing in the background and we're just doing that with kudzu. Let me check my time. Um, I'm doing four petals with the circles. Those are just really easy to do. Um, I can probably stay on for maybe five more minutes. I kind of want you guys to see how easy it is to do the really big flowers. Um, but I gotta do the background first. So I've got the kudzu here. I'm just doing some leaves. I'm doing the same thing. My brush is wet. I'm just kind of making them in a little shape of a triangle. Come back with the little white, make a little line down the middle here. I'm gonna come back with the little kudzu because that was a little bit bright. We don't want the, the line that bright. So whenever you, it kind of blends just like you would on a, on a piece of paper or a, a big piece of furniture. I think I said a piece of paper, but just like you would on a big thing of furniture, it just blends right in. 
So actually I missed, I need to do another flower over here. There we go. Put a little red speck in the middle of it. All set. And then we've got a, oops. You know, I'm so used to using my misting brush. I keep trying to find that instead of my little Dixie cup here. <laughs> All right, so I'm opening up the gulf because on the edge here, we've got um, a flower. We've got those kind of flowers in that color. So it's just a little, a few leaves coming in from the flower over here. And then we're going to rinse the brush off. We've got a larger red flower um, right here. And it's kind of overlapping those other little flowers I did. And these are kind of flowers that are just coming in from the edge that you can just barely see. And it's okay if your paint is on thick, that texture that it creates is great. All right, and then, okay, so I kind of lied. I forgot a leaf here. That's kind of, I'm kind of freelancing this right now. I can't really see my, my line I had. So we're just kind of going and painting whatever. Just trying to stick with the general color of it. And... I'm just blending a little paint on here. I want to get a few things in so you can kind of see really how it comes together. So now we've got another flower here that is in the gulf. And I'm just going to put the leaves on. And it's super, I mean, you, I'm really clearly just making some shapes here. I'm not actually painting flowers, but when you put all these shapes together, they look like flowers. Um, so these aren't the, these aren't hard to do. So in the center, it's just white here, like the material. There's some red dots on these, but I do need to wait for that weight to dry a little bit. All right, so over here, we've got another red flower. So this one's red right here. We're just gonna kinda put some big leaves on there. And you see I'm going over some of these small flowers. Um, and that's perfect. That's what makes them, gives it dimension, makes them look like they're in the background. You do want to keep your paint wet um, so you can kind of have some clear lines. And hopefully I can get a whole little section done of this. Otherwise, I will, because I'm going to have to jump off in a minute. But you can kind of get the idea. I'll show you the sample board again so you can see how it comes out. Um, and I'll post a picture once I finish these up, probably tomorrow, uh, sometime around there. So that's going to be, just let's add the white center to this. And then we can come back up here, add a couple dots. You could just put very little paint on because on these these flowers that are in the gulf here on the material, they got little red dots. Just kind of trying to make this blend in with the material. But you can see how to paint those. I'm actually out of time, so I definitely have to jump off. I'm gonna pop you guys up here. Uh, maybe, I think I might just drop my phone out. <laughs> there we go. Oh, thanks, Julie. Well, I'm sure you'll see it. You're, she's, Julie's here in Madison, too, so I'm sure she'll see this soon. But you guys, just, oh, there went my lighting. Um, let me stand that up. 
All right, so you guys can just see all the different creative things you can do with the Dixie Bell paint. You can paint it on canvas. You can paint it on a board like this. This will make a great sign. That's why I try to use these as the sample boards. Here's a close-up of how the flowers kind of look once they all start coming together. Um, so you can get that idea. And if you guys have any questions, again, you can go to my Facebook page. Just like or follow me on Facebook. Um, definitely send me a message. If you have any questions, um, and just trying to think if I'm forgetting anything, that light falling over kind of got me off. But thanks for hanging out tonight, you guys, and take care. Have a Merry Christmas, and have a good night. <sighs>